everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff, and before me I've got the Oppo Find 7a. Thank you so much Oppo for setting this out for me to look at. I'm going to also be looking at the Find 7 when that comes out as well. Now there's really not so many differences between the two. The only differences are that this has the 1080 by 1920 5.5 inch display. The one that's on the Find 7 has the Quad HD display and it's also 5.5 inches. Now I'm not really sure why anyone would want to have a Quad HD display at 5.5 inches. I don't think that a lot of people will notice a difference between 1080 and 1920 and Quad HD. Although if you are someone who's in China or if you're someone who's in Japan and you need to read characters that have a lot of details, then I can see a Quad HD display having a lot of value. But I will be the judge of that when I get a hold of the Find 7 and I will let you all know if there really is a phenomenal difference. Other than that, the Find 7 is a little bit more expensive, about $100 more expensive. This one should be $500 and the Find 7 should be $600. So it's going to be up to you if you want to pay that extra $100 to get that little bit of boost in specs. Both of them have the Snapdragon 801 SoC. This is the AB version versus the AC version that's on the Find 7, which is just a little bit higher clocked. But they both have all the exact same goodies and I am excited to show them to you because they're not like the regular ho-hum of other devices that I've seen out these days. Although the HTC One M8 did have a lot of new interesting features, some people just considered them gimmicks. And what's on here are not gimmicks, they're actually really useful and implemented in a very nice way. So I'm excited to show this to you and I will do so right now. So what we've got here is the black model. I'm going to go ahead and open the box. You can see it's some nice looking plastic. It's a good quality box. Now, once we open up the box, we are immediately presented with the phone, which you can indeed see is the black version. I think on the camera, it looks a little bit bluish, but they call this midnight. It is indeed black. They do include a screen protector that's been pre-installed. Unfortunately, mine had a little bit of a bubble underneath it. There was some type of debris or material, so I had to remove it. But no biggie because it has Gorilla Glass 3 and it feels so silky smooth that a screen protector kind of just ruins the experience. So quickly on the front here, we have a five megapixel camera. We have a receiver. We have some capacitive touch buttons along the bottom. And what I really love is this pulsating light that's on the bottom in blue. When I turn it on, you'll be able to see it. Anytime I get a notification, it's got an oscillating blue light and it makes it very hard to miss notifications and it's very pleasant to look at so I think they did a great job on that. We've got a 13 megapixel camera on the back. We've got a dual LED flash. I'm going to go ahead and pop off this back cover which you can easily do with sliding your fingernail underneath. What you can see here on the bottom indeed are stereo speakers and I can tell you already that they sound very, very nice. They're loud, they actually have bass to them and it's just something I really appreciate. I also like that they're not along the bottom because when they're along the bottom, in my experience, they're more easy to cover. So underneath here we have an SD card slot which is expandable up to 128 gigabytes. We've got a micro SD card slot this looks like a microphone right here. On the top, what we have here is a standard headphone jack. On the side, we've got a volume rocker, which is really nice and responsive. And we've got our power button on the other side, which is interesting because on Samsung phones, it's usually the opposite, where the volume rocker is on the left-hand side and the power button is on the right-hand side. Either way, that's been all right. So setting that aside, I want to open up the rest of the box here. Oppo sent me the US version. There's also an international version. The US version has LTE bands, band 4, band 17, so I can use it on T-Mobile or AT&T and get LTE. So that's excellent. Now what I've just taken out of the box here is something that's very, very interesting. This is Oppo's own proprietary charging system. They call this VOOC Rapid Charge. You can see we've got a micro USB charging port on the bottom course alongside next to that microphone. But this quick charging system is something amazing. Basically, you're able to charge from zero to 75% in a half hour. And I can tell you already that just this ability to charge it quickly has made this my primary phone for these past few days because I know that I can plug it in, I can leave it in there for 10, 15, 20 minutes, and I've got plenty of charge. 
Most of the time when I put my device on a charger, it's not near a 0% anyway. So if I'm at 50% and I charge it for just 20 minutes, I'm good to go again. So that is just something amazing. I don't know why other manufacturers don't include this. The one thing though to pay attention to, like I said, is this is proprietary. If you plug this into a wall and put it into another phone that does not support the VOOC charging system, it's just going to charge it at 2 amps. Interesting thing though is I tried plugging this into several different Samsung devices and it just doesn't recognize it at all. You can see that it's quite a bit longer than a normal connector. So it will not go all the way in to anything but the Oppo Find 7 7a. I did plug it into my HTC One M8 and it recognized it just fine so it seems to be hit and miss. So in general I'm going to use this charger only for the Oppo Find 7 or 7a. And you're going to need this, of course, to transfer data between your computer. Otherwise, we've got some earphones. We've also got some earbud replacements for various sizes. That's all that's in there. I made quite a mess. Gotta set all that aside. So, we're going to turn it on now. The battery that we have here is 2,800 milliamp hours. The one that's in the Oppo Find 7, I believe, is 3,000 milliamp hours. So it's got 200 milliamp hours more. I'm not so sure about what that battery life's gonna be like with a display that has that many pixels. But even though the 7 is gonna have so many pixels, if you just plug this in for several minutes, you are good to go again, so it's not so concerning. As for the battery life that I'm noticing right now, I'm getting about four and a half hours of screen time, about 15 hours, so it definitely gets me through the day. I do wish it lasted a little bit longer, so one thing that I can say right now is that this is not final firmware, so I'm hoping that as it gets to being more and more final, that we'll start to see a little bit better battery life. But still, the battery life is not too bad. Now immediately you can see that this is a very big, bright display. You've got 401 pixels per inch. It's incredibly sharp. Still, at 5.5 inches, 1080p looks really great. So I really don't see a need to go ahead and get Quad HD unless, like I mentioned, you really need to have Chinese characters looking sharp or if you just need that extra detail. So this display has amazing viewing angles. It gets nice and bright. I can speak a little bit about the calibration of this display as well. I noticed that it's pretty blue, like pretty, pretty blue. That's something that I notice a lot with LCDs. I don't know if it has something to do with the backlight or if it just has to do with Oppo or whoever calibrated it. Not quite hitting the mark. As for the colors, I can tell that they're oversaturating in places. The most obvious place where they're oversaturating is in greens. That's just very, very common. It kind of reminds me of the LG G2. What LG is doing with the greens is they're really compressing them, making something that just say is 50% green appear 100% green. So I notice when watching content, there's a person in the foreground and there's some trees in the background that the trees look neon. They just, they just don't look natural at all. And the person looks all right. When I did some measurements, I noticed that at least skin tones or mid-tones, that's where skin tones resides, is in mid-tones. The mid-tones and skin tones seem to be pretty okay. So it's a decent experience when I'm watching Netflix. They did a good job on that. So moving on, I mentioned a little bit about the specifications. The Find 7a is just a little bit lower spec. So the Find 7 and the Find 7a both have the Snapdragon 801 SoC. This one's clocked at 2.3 gigahertz. We've got four crate cores clocked at 2.3 gigahertz. And the Find 7 has four crate cores clocked at 2.5 gigahertz. We've got two gigabytes of RAM on this one and it's got 16 gigabytes of internal storage versus the Find 7 that has 32 gigabytes of internal storage and three gigabytes of RAM. So choose your poison. I think that the Find 7 is just good enough. Performance has been just fine for me. I want to bring some other phones into the picture. You can see that we've got a Galaxy Note 3. You can see it's pretty much the same size as the Galaxy Note 3. Stacking them on top of each other, we can see that the Find 7a is taller, but you can see that the Note 3 is a bit wider. And setting them down next to each other, I can see that they're pretty much the same thickness as well. So I would not consider this a thick phone. It does look nice and thin to me. So here we have a Galaxy S5 and you can see that this is really much bigger than the Galaxy S5. You can see just how much bigger a 5.5 inch display looks over the 5 inch display on the Galaxy S5. So this is not a small phone by any means. 
So guys out there, if you've had a Note 3 in your pocket or anything similar in size, you probably know just how comfortable it is. For some guys who have deeper pockets, I don't think you're going to have any issues. But for guys who have more shallow pockets, it might be hitting your hip a little bit when you bend your knee. For me, it's just absolutely ridiculous. I can actually do a pocket test, but no more ridiculous than the Note 3. It just looks hilarious sticking out of my pocket. So, quick pocket test. The most manageable device that I have in pocket is the iPhone 5S. This is a device that I like carrying around when I really want something small. And so here we have the Galaxy Note 3. And we've got the Oppo Find 7A. You can see that they're very similar in size as I had showed you. So let's go ahead and see what they look like in pocket. So iPhone 5S, keep this in mind. You can see that it comes up about mid-hip. Now for guys, I think that this is pretty much where this device is going to come up on you in pocket. Girls have shallow pockets, it's really not fair, but it's true. So you can see on me, this is just ridiculous. It's pretty much going all the way up to my hip. If I do anything like this, it's just gonna stab me. So for guys, it's probably gonna be more around here. And I can still sit, at least comfortably, with my iPhone 5S in pocket. And the Oppo, you can see that the Oppo is just a little bit taller. So ladies, it's not a manageable device. You should probably just put it in your purse. Or if you're cool like me, you can just walk around like this. This is just super sexy. At least it feels slim. It's not a hugely bulky phone, so I think it will be all right. So now taking a look underneath about phone, you can see it's called Color OS. That's the skin that Oppo uses based on Android. You can see here that it says Android version 4.3, so it's still Jelly Bean. I haven't heard anything yet about a KitKat update, but I'm really hoping that it gets one, although performance has been actually pretty nice. I haven't had any issues with stuttering, even though this is not final firmware. I've considered this a very smooth experience. This is a very responsive phone, very touch responsive indeed. Everything just feels liquidy smooth to me. I have no complaints. Now what really gets me about this phone and what makes me want to use this phone is how well implemented some of the features are, such as gesture and motion, wake up blank screen. Let's just start with these two. So underneath wake up blank screen is kind of like OK Google. You can see we turn it on, it says you can wake up Google now by speaking to the screen even when the screen is blank. Underneath here it says hey Snapdragon. Oh, and you can see that it already decided to listen to me. You can tell that it's listening for me when you see this little jobber here, the Oppo guy. So even when it's off, I can say, okay, Snapdragon, and there you are. So that's really a nice feature. It's always listening. It does have an always listening feature like the Moto X. Now my favorite thing is gesture and motion. There's just so many things that you can do under here. You can add a custom gesture, such as underneath here, you have your gesture panel. This quarter of the screen is just designated for gesture panel, so if you swipe downward, it's going to bring this up. You can tell it to do so many different things, from drawing a circle, it's going to open up the camera, drawing a V, it's going to turn on the flashlight. You can program it to go to a website, such as me checking out AdSense. I can make a dollar sign, and it's going to bring me right into what I need to. If I make an M, it's going to call Mom. You can even open up applications. So you can see Open App. Let's just say that we want to open up the Music app. So we can make a note looking thing. So now when we go underneath the gesture panel, we make a note looking thing. It's gonna bring us into the music app. So I really love that. And also what I really love is it's listening when the screen is off as well. So just say that I want to open up the camera without having to turn on the device. Again, you can do a circle and it opens up the camera for you. These are called screen off gestures. And these ones are actually pre-decided. Oppo has added a bunch of them in here. You can't add any more gestures, although you can program the gestures to be what you want them to be. So I decided the M would be calling my mom. If I want to open up Netflix, all I have to do is this and it brings me right into Netflix. We've got other various motion controls. One that I really like is activate the camera with multi-finger pinch. So for example, I can activate the camera from anywhere, anywhere in the phone, it does not matter. And there you go, it instantly brings it up. It's not something that takes forever. It recognizes your fingers instantly and it's just incredibly snappy anywhere that I am. Look how fast that is. So you can double tap to turn on the display. You can double tap on the home button to turn it off at the bottom. I just really love how they've implemented these gesture features. I'm using them all the time. It's really just excellent. 
They cover their basses so well. You can even use two fingers to turn up the audio. And then you can turn it down again, up again, down again. This is really nice. You can turn all those features off if you don't want them on. But that's just, it just works so well and it just makes me so happy inside. I really feel with this phone that I'm able to interact with it and it understands me. Again, three fingers, for example, and I can take a screenshot. So just, there's a lot to remember and you don't have to turn them all on. You can just keep them off if you don't want them. But really, A+. Plus. I'm also really liking the extra security settings that they include. We've got a guest mode. I really love application encryption. If you go underneath application encryption, I've chosen two different things to say if someone gets a hold of my phone and I don't want them going underneath my photos for whatever reason, or I don't want people seeing what's going on underneath my Google Keep. I can add them by saying encrypt apps, put my password in, and I can choose whatever I want to not be accessible by anybody. So you can see when I do go underneath photos, there you are. People can't get into my apps. Ha ha ha. You've also got a holiday mode, which lets you add permitted contacts and lets you set time when you don't want to be bothered. This is something that every single phone should have. No excuse. We have a nifty data saving mode. You can see right now it says no app is allowed to run in the background. So when this is activated, it says apps in the background will not be able to consume network traffic, power, and CPU when data saving is on. So I can add my exceptions, things that I do want to keep running in the background. But this is a very excellent feature. Also it lets you see which applications are running a lot in the background using a lot of data. So it gives you a data ranking. So really nice job here, Oppo. There's things that I haven't seen in other devices that you just integrate right into here. The last thing that I want to talk a little bit about is the camera. I wasn't sure what to expect with this camera. I'm happy to say that when I take pictures, the colors actually look pretty nice. And this has 4K video as well. You can record 4K video. And the 4K video comes out nice and sharp. The colors are nice in video. This is Pike Place. So they did a pretty good job here. You see you've got several different settings. You have the ability to make a GIF, audio photo, we've seen a couple of these before, HD picture, which is interesting, lets you take a 50 megapixel picture. It's kind of a software trick. It's been okay, but honestly it's not all that impressive. It's basically taking 10 shots and interweaving them. This is only a 13 megapixel sensor, so really it's, it's just, it's a software trick. It's fun, but when I zoom in really far, I, I really don't see an incredible amount of resolution. So it, it's okay. We've got a slow shutter mode. There's the beauty face mode to calm down any types of blemishes on your face. Panorama HDR. HDR mode is actually pretty nice as well. I have a couple of pictures in Seattle on a very overcast day. And I think that the results come out very nice. So needless to say, I am quite pleased. I am excited to see how it improves as time goes on. Just for the fact that I'm able to charge this very quickly, I really want to keep this phone around. There's just something about it. I keep picking it up over something even like the Galaxy S5. I've kind of lost interest in the Galaxy S5 in favor of the Oppo. So very nice job, Oppo, making a phone that I feel that I can interact with. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time to do a full an hour in-depth review. But if you guys ask me some questions, maybe I can make another video about this. So indeed, please ask me questions down in the comment section below. I'm sure I can make an update video based on those questions. So thank you everybody for watching. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Also make sure to follow the link in the description to my Google Plus page because that's where I write a lot of things these days. If I'm updating on something, I put it on Google Plus. You can interact with me on my threads in Google+. So when I post a video about this Oppo, you can comment inside my Google Plus thread, ask questions there. It's probably a really great place to ask it and to interact with me. I really love this. I think this is really promising and I can't wait to see the Find 7. So have a good night, you guys.